Hello, my name is Colin Slaybach, and I'm here today with Dave Littell and Bob Klein. So Bob, why should individuals have a stage Roth IRA conversion plan? In order to understand that, you need to look at what's the overall goal here. And in any kind of retirement income planning situation, you want to optimize the life of your after-tax retirement assets, the longevity, you want to increase that. And when it comes to Roth IRA conversions, you got to look at, okay, if I don't do Roth IRA conversions, I'm going to be paying a bunch of taxes later on when the values of my assets are much greater potentially why not look ahead and pay some taxes today knowing that there's a good chance that depending upon what your situation is, of course, and what the stock market is doing, but there's a fairly good chance the value of your assets are gonna grow and to the extent that you can pay a little bit of tax now, that can go a long way towards optimizing the longevity of your assets. So having said that, there's basically, I have seven reasons to start Roth IRA conversion plan. Number one is to eliminate taxation on the future growth of converted assets. So Bob, I think that's a really interesting point. I think that really appeals to people. First off, this idea that, okay, you pay taxes on a little bit now, so you don't have to pay taxes on a whole lot later. I mean, that's easy for people to understand. Uh, and I think there's also the element that you're prepaying a liability. So you're eliminating a liability. It's like prepaying your funeral expenses. Like it's gone now. You don't have to worry about it. The tax liability is gone. You have more certainty as to how much income you have. So I think that's a really good point that that's very appealing to the average person. They, they understand it. Does that come across when you communicate with your clients? Yeah, that's the point I try to get across. And furthermore, when you prepay the liability, it's potentially in many cases a lower liability than you're gonna pay later. Right. So then six other reasons to start a staged Roth IRA conversion plan is take advantage of the low tax rates that are in effect today that are scheduled to expire in 2025. You have a top tax rate of 37%, and after 2025, and potentially sooner, that could be higher. And you know we have to say up front, it's not all about tax rates. When they lowered the rate to 37%, you know, there was give and take, but that is a consideration, and it's especially advantageous for business owners self-employed individuals and other individuals who can use this qualified business income deduction in those types of situations because of that deduction their marginal effective tax rate is even lower mm -hmm. so we don't know what's going to happen with that deduction after 2025. Yeah that's an interesting point I think we always need to think about that a little bit current rates versus future rates and one you actually have a law that's going to expire so we know that's going to go away and then secondly, we all see the federal deficit today and are concerned that maybe tax rates will go up. And I think the average person expects future tax rates to be higher as well. So I don't think that's a hard sell to your clients either. Mm -hmm. okay. Then number three, another benefit is reducing required minimum distributions beginning at 72. Let me preface that by saying required minimum distributions, a lot of people say, yeah, they're not a bad thing because the IRS is pretty generous with their life expectancy tables, you can take required minimum distributions if you're, you still have the funds and if you're still alive through age 115. Yeah. So it's not a bad thing. However, my point is why let the IRS control your destiny and control your retirement income plan? Because you know if you have those traditional 401k plans, traditional IRAs and you're 72, you have to start taking money from them. So I like to use a euphemism, it's one of my blog titles, recapture my deductions for RMDs. Why be in that situation? Because you know you're gonna get deductions now for making the contributions, but beginning at 72, you have to recapture those deductions in the form of income. And you're really handcuffed to the IRS, and if you do have a longer longevity, you can get into those higher tax brackets later in life, even if you were wanting to save those for inheritance. Yeah, and I think the average person is really motivated by that. They don't like that, right? Like older clients that have to take out more than they need find that really irritating. So by bringing that up and talking about how they can control that, I think that's appealing. Yeah, which leads into my next two points here. Potentially reduce your Medicare Part B premiums to the extent you're reducing your RMDs. That's a layer of income potentially you're not going to have and Medicare Part B premiums are based on modified adjusted gross income. The premiums, while they're relatively inexpensive, still 
aren't that cheap necessarily when your income gets higher because they're income dependent. It could be as much as $5,500 a person over the course of a year. Multiply that by two for a couple, you have $11,000. So to the extent you can keep your modified adjusted gross income down by reducing your required minimum distributions, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, again, I think that one comes back to having some control because the way those rules work is if you have income that's $1 over the limit, it takes you into the next bracket, you have to pay the higher premiums. And it's about each time you move up you know, to the next level, it's approximately $1,000 a year. You know? So, so it's, it's significant like that each time you move up. So like, you don't wanna, because of your RMDs, be forced into the next bracket where if you had a few thousand dollars less, you'd, you'd be paying the, the lower premium. Number five, there's something out there called the widowers or widows income tax penalty, which exists when you have a couple and the spouse dies, the surviving spouse is going to be penalized to the extent that they have similar income as they did when they were a couple. And as a single person, the tax rates are higher, standard deduction gets chopped in half, just a number of things go on which can result in significant income tax liability. So to the extent you can control that, obviously requires a lot of foresight and recognition of the fact and knowledge and understanding that if your spouse passes away, you're gonna pay a higher tax. So to the extent if you can do Roth IRA conversions now and pay a little bit of tax and then you're in a situation where you're a surviving spouse and you don't have as much in the way of traditional IRA accounts, traditional 401k accounts, because you were, had the foresight to do these Roth IRA conversions, that can lessen that problem. Yeah, and I, I think of that when we talk about uh, Roth conversions, we do often talk about, you know, if your future tax rate was higher, then, then you'd want to do conversions now. Like that's a standard principle. And people often have trouble thinking about that. Like, well, my future tax rate's not going to get higher. And then you just say, well, after your spouse dies, you know, when a couple becomes a single taxpayer, the tax rates go up. So I think that's a really important point. And it's a good example of that particular principle. Yeah. And the one other thing I want to add to that, you need to consider state income tax liability, not just federal. Uh, the state that I come from, California, the state income tax attributable to being single versus married can be quite a bit higher. Oh, that's great information. Then you also realize that if you're losing a spouse and you have this longer time frame of being single in retirement, there was probably some medical expenses around that spouse dying, and as someone ages, their medical expenses also increase. So your need for income could be a lot higher as well. Okay, good point. Then another benefit of starting a staged retirement income plan is so that you reduce your dependency on taxable assets in retirement. You don't want to have all your eggs in one basket if you just have qualified retirement plans. And quick example, let's say you have major household improvement to do that. It's going to run you $100,000 and you're in a 35% tax bracket you're gonna to have to pull out 154,000 from the qualified plans to get that 100 versus had you had the foresight ability, et cetera, et cetera, and you have Roth 401ks, Roth IRAs, you just take the 100,000 and there's no tax liability associated with that. Well, that brings up a really good point because in financial plans, we always assume the income floor, but there are these major one-time expenses like a, perhaps a child getting married or even college if you have an older parent that may be coming through the, through the pipeline that if you didn't plan appropriately, you could have one year of very high taxes. Yeah, that, that's such an important point. And again, I think people don't think about that, but it's, it's true. The last thing you want to do is take a big chunk out of your qualified plan and have to pay a lot of taxes for that year. You want other sources yeah. uh, of income mm -hmm. for those extraordinary expenses. And last but not least, this is kind of one of those intangible benefits to the extent that you have a staged Roth IRA conversion plan going. And by the way, with the staged Roth plan, most people don't do a Roth conversion in one fell swoop. They do it in stages, not necessarily every year, but over a number of years. But they're always looking at it to the extent that they have a staged Roth IRA conversion plan, a formal plan in place. So it's kind of an intangible benefit. It, forces you to stay focused on retirement income planning, and you're not just simply looking at, okay, is this a good year to do a Roth IRA conversion? 
to the extent you're looking at that, you're naturally looking at other retirement income planning strategies that are going to be beneficial to you as well. So it reminds you to, to go back and revisit your planning every year. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. That was great stuff. This video was made possible by the New York Life Center for Retirement Income.